everybody to another edition of the Joe Mo Show right here on 88.3 FM WXOU, Auburn Hills, Michigan, Oakland University, and all your wonderful station identification features. I am your host, Giovanni Mo Sherry, and your sports media director here at WXOU. And the Joe Mo Show is your home for all Oakland University sports and beyond on 88.3 FM. Don't forget to follow WXOU on our MAB award-winning social media platforms. And don't forget to follow me as well while you're giving WXOU a follow. Both me and WXOU can be found on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you're not listening right now at 6 p.m. on Thursdays, then you can listen to me at your own convenience anywhere you are on YouTube and Spotify as each of episodes of The Joe Mo Show go up on said platforms. And since it is the middle of the summer, it is July, it is the, let's say, the dog days of sports, and especially sports coverage. Not a whole lot's going on, at least, you know, both collegially and professionally. You know, things are starting to get ramped up a little bit. Everybody needs their rest in the summer and needs their time to enjoy themselves. So that's exactly what's happening right now. And in the meantime, don't you worry, we're not going to stop talking about sports here. We got some season reviews that I like to cover here on the Joe Mo Show to kind of keep us going into the sports season. And for today, what we're going to be talking about and what's going to be the big focus of this episode of the Joe Mo Show, of course, we're going to be talking about the USPBL. It's a bit of a light week because it was the All-Star Week, so we had got only a few games to cover over there. But the big focus of today's show is going to be Oakland University Club Football. The sole representatives on Oakland University's campus of the greatest American sport out there, tackle football. We got it here on the Joe Mo Show today, not only in a season review, but we got not one, but two guests coming into the studio from club football. We got your captain and quarterback, Evan Pletz, and your president, Captain and dog in the trenches, Devin Banks, both of which are going to be sitting on the couch across from me here in the WXLU studios at 6.30. So be sure to stay tuned to the Joe Mo Show for that. Or if you're on Spotify and YouTube, then you can find that interview separately from the sports update section of the Joe Mo Show. I got to divide it up nice for you guys, so don't worry about a thing. So... Before we're going to we're going to start with USPBL by the way and we're just going to lean into entirely club football afterwards. But before we do any of that, we got to talk about Bart's Pizza. Bart Basilico reinvented his father's pizzeria business by putting it on wheels. I'm talking a pizza food truck, baby. Bart and his wife Lauren travel all around Metro Detroit cooking up homemade pies made fresh to order in their four-layered pizza oven on wheels. You can find them on their website at eatbartspizza.com and on Facebook and Instagram as well at Bart's Pizza. His last name is literally Basil, and if I got to spell it out for you guys, you got Basilico means basil in English. So with a last name like that, you know he knows what he's doing. And while you're there, be sure to grab a cannoli as well. Bart's Pizza, it's too good. Yo, 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 I'm Jake Masucci from Jake's Takes. I wanted to talk a little bit about my show on my guy Giovanni's, Giovanni's own show. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about Jake's Takes. I'm a student manager at Oakland University, and I kind of just talk all things sports. I talk a lot about the NBA, talk a little college basketball. We did a lot of March Madness stuff recently. We talked about... NBA playoffs, NFL playoffs, talked a lot about the NFL draft. It's basically just an all-things sports show. I really think you guys would enjoy it. And shout out to my guy Giovanni. Love him. But please check out Jake's Takes. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and then it's also available on its own YouTube channel. So please check out Jake's Takes, but please continue enjoying Giovanni's show. Now, of course, before we get started with the USPBL, I lied to you guys. I got written down some little bit of highlight, uh, highlighted news here for o- Oakland University sports. It appears that head, uh, associate head coach Tony Jones of Oakland University men's basketball has moved on to another position, and his reign with the Golden Grizzlies has sadly come to an end. Sadly for us, but not so sadly for him. Coach Tony Jones has been an integral part of Greg Campy's coaching staff, having a great amount of experience, and for us at WXOU, he has been a fantastic uh, halftime interview in each of our basketball broadcasts. So it's going to be a darn shame to be missing Coach Tony Jones, but we wish him luck on his future endeavors. 
So I just wanted to make sure to get that uh, out of the way as well. And now we're going to get into some USPBL before leaning all the way into club football. So, like I was saying before, it was a little bit of a light week for the USPBL. Only having three games played since the last episode of the Joe Mo Show. We got July 7th, which was right after the show aired on Thursday. July 8th, and then the 11th. So, to start with the game that happened right after the Joe Mo Show, it was the Hoppers and the Beavers. And I gotta tell you, the Hoppers have just not been doing as well. They've been slipping and not as much hopping going on in the past few weeks. And this game was just an example of that. So it was a 5-2 to two score between the Beavers and the Hoppers. Beavers winning it 5-2. to two. Let me give you the recap of the game. So it was just about all Beavers for the entire game. And that, that's in terms of highlights and in terms of describing it. There's not much else to say. So the Beavers, they started off the scoring with a single run in the second inning. Piled on in the fourth with two more. Piled on in the sixth with two more. Hoppers remaining scoreless all the way up until this point. And it wasn't until the eighth inning where the Hoppers got their sole two runs scored. To make it not a shutout, but still a disappointing performance for the Hoppers fans out there, including myself, you know, the biggest Hoppers fan. That is out there. I dare you to prove me wrong. So... You got a 5-2 to two score between the Hoppers and the Beavers. And what is just, you know, what stings here is that just last week, the Hoppers found themselves in a position of half a game out of first place in the USPBL with their eastern neighbors, the Utica Unicorns, who have been in first place ever since week two, I would say. Hoppers had the initial lead uh, going 3-0 and to start the season, but... Have not, have yet to maintain such perfection, so it's kind of hard to expect an undefeated record in baseball. But nonetheless, they can't. They've been close. They've been within a game, game and a half. I don't believe they've ever been over two games out of the Eastern standings. But this week is such a case. So far, there are two and a half games behind the Unica Unicorns, who and the um, Hoppers, who are currently. Let me look it up. Hoppers currently stand 10 and 12. So it, it's not not the best that we've seen from the Hoppers. Let me give you the rest of the standings. Why don't we just cut to the chase here? Let's give you the USPBL standings right now. So in the East, like I mentioned, the, unic- the Unicorns are on top. 11 and 8 is their record, and it leads the league. Eastside Diamond Hoppers 10 and 12. But you got the Beavers. You know, I've been talking about how you know, it kind of stinks as a Hoppers fan. But if you're a Beavers fan, you guys are really starting to dig it, you know, dig out of the hole you guys have been in for a little bit of the season here. Now they stand at 11-11 and are on top of the West. And in last place would be the West Side Woolly Mammoths, at least in the West. So I know, per, uh, excuse me for the uh, what would be the confusing description here. But if you're unclear of what I'm talking about here, then you can go to USPBL.com. Get the stats for yourself if you don't like me that much. It won't hurt my feelings. But that, that that's your current standings here for the USPBL. But, of course, we got All-Star Week that just took place this past Saturday, July 8th. That was Saturday, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> I had to check the calendar. So it was Team Burl versus Team Chris, that being Burl Dixon and Chris Davis being the captains of the All-Star team. And the score and ended up with the West winning it 3-2 to two in a very tough game. So to give you the scoring there, in the first inning of the All-Star game, each team was able to get a single run before the West took the lead in the third inning with another single run of their own. The East was not done yet. They did respond in the fourth. All, by the way, everything was a single run. There was no multiple scores in an inning. So in the fourth inning, either, the fourth inning, the East was able to tie up the game 2-2. Two to two, But the fifth inning it was the last response. It was the final blow to the game. It was a single run in the fifth inning to give the 3-2 to two final score in the All-Star game. And to give some highlights for it. No, not not you know five total runs scored. Not the biggest offensive game here, but of course you got uh, Jordan Hussein scoring three runs, going three for two in such a process. That being for the West, so he was responsible for all three runs for the West, if you want to put it that way. And they got Team Chris, who had Luis Acevedo, or Acevedo going two for two with a single run, and then Malik Bolin went two for three with a single run. 
thus concluding the All-Star game. And then in the latest game so far in the schedule, there's one of the non-public games played behind closed doors, only leaving us a box score to look at, not necessarily a game summary. That was between, once again, the Beavers and the Hoppers. And I say it in this tone of voice because not only did the Beavers win again, but it was in sudden death. The Beavers so far are 2-2 two and two in sudden death games in the USPBL. And to give a kind of description of what, um, what that even means, because usually in baseball, if you're tied at the end, you go into extra innings. But to speed it up a little bit and to keep it more family friendly, the USPBL has created sudden death rules, which detail a coin flip after nine innings. You know, and, and you get to pick, you know, the winner of the coin toss gets to pick whether they're on offense or defense. If they pick offense, then they are granted only three outs to score a single run. And to help that out, they have a runner on first base to start with. So if you get that single run and three outs, you win the game. If you're on defense and you get the three outs before any runs are scored, then you win the game and in the score in the or at least in the record books remains tied. This was a game where the defense won. It was the Bir- Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. I'll take you through the score here. Diamond Hoppers got it started in the second inning with a single run, but then the Beavers, they went one run in the fifth and then one run in the sixth to go up two to one. But then the Hoppers, they maintained a tied game. Scoring in response in the sixth inning themselves to give us the 2-2 two to two record, or 2-2 two to two score. And that's how it remained until the ninth inning. In the ninth inning, it was the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers that held on defense. A 2-2 two to two score was the final, and therefore won the game. 11-11 is our record, leaving the Diamond Hoppers 10-12 and 12 on the season. So that is going to conclude our USPBL update here, but we got a season review of club football here.